You're with Newsmakers on the panel this week, Sharon Torstenson, Hector Matthews and Martin Van Bainen. The uh, Seabed and Foreshore Report is back before Parliament and I suppose for the Labour Party this could be an opportunity to exercise a few demons. What is going to emerge from this report? Uh, Hector, kick us off. Um, uh, Look, I think they should repeal the Act. I think the report was um, pretty sensible. Um, We'll be back to where we started pre the Act being passed um, and then we... uh, what we should all do collectively as a nation is stop, think, breathe, take a deep breath, chill out for a couple of months. Um, the world wasn't going to end prior to the Act being passed. It's not going to end after it being repealed. Um, and then uh, exercise some sensible time around uh, what we want as a country um, uh, with respect to the seabed and foreshore. It's a messy sort of tangled business. Um, but, you know, Māori don't want to take over the universe. They don't want to take over the ownership of um, beaches to the extent where Mike and, and, and my kids aren't allowed to go swimming. It's not about that. Um, so, yeah, repeal the act, take a deep breath, and then look at where to from here. All right. Martin, your general take on this, should we be afraid? No, it's a bit of a myth to suggest, um, as Tahu Pauriki did this morning in the press, um, that we have unfettered access to beaches anyway. I mean, you can go all around New Zealand and find that that um, access is, is, is blocked off all over the place, and not only on the beaches, um, but also to rivers and, and lakes and things. So one, but again, but putting that <coughs> aside for a minute, um, I, mean, I think we're heading towards some sort of national settlement with... Uh, Māori collectively, and and that hopefully will put the matter to rest. Um, I, I still think it's, it's going to be difficult, though, for, for Māori to have customary title, specific rights, and provide unfettered <coughs> access to the public. So I, I, I can see some real challenges there. OK. Do you think, Sharon, the political climate, and maybe the social climate, has changed compared to the Hikoi, Helen Clark? Haters and Wreckers, mm. Don Brash, Olriwa. Has that all been shelved in our recent history, but is the climate different now, do you think? I don't think it has been shelved. I think there will still be a lot of people that were getting rather agitated about it all. Why, I don't know. Perhaps it's because there's been a bit more heat than light on the topic. People have been quick to leap in and stir up anti maori feeling, I think, with the whole argument around the seabed and foreshore. Mm. What I see people overlooking is that those people that are crying out about special treatment for Māori have overlooked the fact that the treaty guaranteed both Māori and Pākehā the same laws, and what Māori tried to do at the beginning was actually use those same laws, the same right to court as everybody else, and the Act stopped that. So the Act was actually taking away an equal right rather than upholding an equal right. Sure. OK. Just a couple of quick things for Hector. Do you think customary rights are property rights? Um, From a Māori perspective, they are. But as Martin pointed out, it's difficult. I I can appreciate how difficult it is to reconcile that um, from someone who doesn't have Māori whakapapa and wants to say, well, actually, I want to go and get some pippies or some mussels from the beach as well. Um, And herein lies the difficulty throughout all these treaty negotiations because Māori have a different perspective on what that looks like. You know, if you, every, everything around the treaty, Māori have had a different view. The, the issue of sovereignty versus kawanatanga. Um, now, the, the fact is the Queen took sovereignty because we have freehold land and all the land was vested in, in her at the time. So, however, Māori have never viewed it that way and probably never will. But we've all managed to uh, live together and you know, make babies and create a pretty good country, notwithstanding some of those differences of of view. So, yes, that was a really long answer, but it's not irreconcilable with unfettered access to beaches and so on, because I'm also a New Zealander uh, who has children of Pākehā descent and want to make sure that, you know, everyone has those rights as well. All right. We'll move on to trucks, because we all love trucks. Heavier trucks bearing down on our highways soon. Is New Zealand's increasing dependence on trucking... An absolute disgrace. Martin. Put it like that, Mike. Um, Look, back to first principles here. It just seems to me that that it it makes a lot more sense to have a train pulling, you know, 30 or 40 um, carriages, or what do they they call the rolling stock, Mm -hmm. with a container on board than have 20 trucks barrelling down the road. Now, maybe I'm being simplistic about it, but surely... 
that is a, you know, we can find some sort of system where, where the bulk of, of, of container traffic and, and other traffic um, goes on the rail is picked up at various um, network points by trucks and taken to wherever they have to be. I mean, to me, it's not it doesn't seem like rocket science. But mm. so why we need these huge trucks, you know, clogging what is not a great road system really, particularly in the South Island? Um, uh, yeah, it, I I can't see that. I just can't see the reason for it. But sure. you know, I I'm not, I don't I'm I'm not. Um, You're just a frustrated. Haven't read all the reports. I haven't read all the reports. I want to be well. I, Frustrated train spotter might. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been so cruel, Martin. No, no, all right. Um, Sharon, if it meant having to pay more for your packet of wheat bix if that packet came on a train, would you happily pay the bill? Well, I'm not an economist, but I don't see why going on a train is going to make something cost more than going <coughs> by road, particularly with the you know looming, if not already present, peak oil. Petrol is only going to go up and up and up. Diesel is only going to go up and up and up. At some stage, the balance is going to be tipped anyway in favour of the train system rather than road system. So mm. let's just get on with it. What about shipping? I often think, why isn't shipping used more, you know, for inter-island freight? Well, it is to an extent, though, isn't it? I mean, through the major ports. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it, it still going to be driven by diesel, aren't they? I mean, we don't have any nuke-powered um, ships that I know of anyway. I'm not sure it's the diesel. It seems to me that the, um, that the biggest cost is probably just wages mm. to, run, to run one of those, one of those um, uh, you know, ships running between Littleton and Auckland. Mm. Uh, I, I checked out just what it would cost to get a car from all Christchurch to Auckland on, on Pacifica, and it was something like $600, and I thought, well, that's, yeah. that is why we mm. have um, people drive. Yeah, all right. We'll take a break. Coming up, is it safe? for your children to play alone at the local park. We'll have a look at that. Also, the Bain retrial and another book is in the pipeline by Joe. Yes, we'll have a look at that. Do stay with us.